us God. Amen. Amen. End time stupor. Adamantbeliever.com forward slash end time stupor dot pdf. Did the link work? Yes. All right. What is a stupor? A stupor is a state of near unconsciousness or insensibility. You can't feel anything and you can't perceive anything. You can't see or hear. That's a stupor. Not see or hear correctly. That's a stupor. Remember when you passed out drunk? I've never passed out ever. Drunk on anything. I've just never passed out. Thank God for that. Amen. I've never passed out. So I don't know what it feels like to be out. Out. But I've seen folk pass out drunk. Amen. And they have no control over anything. They just out. Amen. They, they will potty on themselves. If the bladder's full. Or if their colon is full. Because you just, you just out. Amen. Look at somebody and say, don't get drunk. Don't get, when you get drunk, you will make the worst decisions. Because you out. Amen. And find out why you need to get drunk. That's the thing. Solve that problem. Why are you drinking to get drunk? Amen. You're supposed to be saved. So, near unconsciousness or insense, insensibility. That's a stupor where you just can't function. You just out like the dude in the outline, in the picture. Amen. The Bible tells us that the Jews, biblical Jews, children of Israel, were given the spirit of what? Stupor or slumber. The word says slumber. Translation, if you read it in the ESV or if you translate it, it'll say slump, uh, stupor. Same word, from the Lord. And we're not able to receive Christ because of it. So we hear the word, don't slumber, be awake. You know, don't sleep, be awake. It's not talking about sleep as in rest sleep. It's talking about sleep as in out where you have no perception or sensibility. Amen. You, you awake, but you sleep. Because you can't hear. And you can't see. And so the Bible says that God gave the Jews that. Romans 11 and 8. According as it was written, God hath given them, speaking of them, the Jews, the spirit of slumber. Eyes that they should not see and ears that they should not hear unto this day. Amen. Amen. So this is why they kill the Messiah because they couldn't see him as the Messiah and they couldn't hear him as the Messiah. Amen. 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 Because of their constant fall into idolatry and serving of other gods, the true and living God gave them over to their behaviors. Roman 1 and 28 says, and even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. So when we hear reprobate mind, we automatically think of a person that can't get saved. Right? There's really no such thing as a person that can't get saved. They used to tell us that. They used to tell me I was reprobated. One lady told me that. And I believed it for a long period of time that I couldn't get saved. But as I grew up, I understand anybody that wants to get saved can get saved. Amen. Amen. That's not what a reprobated mind is, a mind that doesn't come where you can't get saved. Reprobate mind follows the fact that you don't want to get saved. There's a difference. It follows it. And it's because there's something else that you want over being saved so because they didn't want to retain God in, God in their knowledge what is that saying that means that there was another God in their knowledge there was someone else something else that they preferred over God 
So God gave them over to that, their preference, what they wanted. So basically, God let them have what they desired. You want Molech? I want, I'm not going to just give you Molech. I'll put you in Babylon and make you worship that God. Y'all can have it if you'd rather have that. But watch how they treat you. They're not going to treat you like the God of gods. False gods or other gods aren't merciful. The devil will kill you. He steals, kills, and destroys. And I'm not going to even say if you make him mad because he's already mad. You can't make the devil mad. He started out mad when you decided to be with him. And he will wreck your life because he hates you. So you don't want God giving you up to another God because another God's not going to treat you right. Amen. Another God's not going to fight to save your soul. Strong delusion always follows those that consistently and willfully fall away from truth. When you overly frustrate the grace of God by using it as a license to sin, then you will eventually close your eyes and ears to the truth that convicts you. So in order to keep doing what you want to do, you got to close your eyes and your ears to the truth. Yeah. 2 Thessalonians 2 and 1 says, And for this cause God shall send them what? Strong delusion that they should what? Believe a lie. And I had somebody tell me, why would God send a strong delusion? Because that's what they want. The truth has always been there. They rejected the truth, so they have to believe a lie. What's the opposite of the truth? A lie. But if you want the truth, you're not going to have the strong delusion. Amen. Amen. Oh, yeah. He's out. The word stupid originated from stupor. Kind of sound the same anyway, don't they? Yeah, stupid derived from stupor. So instead of calling somebody stupor, they just call them stupid. Yeah, that means they have no perception. They're senseless. You don't have no, remember that you used to tell us when you were young, you don't have no sense? Well, you don't have no sense. (laughs) <laughs> wasn't talking about money either you don't have no sense because you would do something so dumb that you would be scratching your head you'd be in the mirror telling yourself that you don't have no sense you ever done that? I've done that got in the mirror, oh you stupid stupid stupor you're just senseless well a person that rejects truth that could change their lives and solve their issues is definitely a person that is stupid. That means you're senseless. That may be a bad word in your house, and I'm sorry, kids. Let me say it. But it's definitely a person that's stupid or stupor or senseless. All of these things, insensibility. That's a person who rejects truth that could change their lives basically the truth will make your life better and solve your internal emotional issues truth could do that but you'd rather stick with the sin that's causing it that's stupid amen Proverbs 12 and 1 whoever Loves discipline, loves knowledge. But he who hates reproof or correction is what? Stupid. You know that word was in the Bible, did you? Now don't be saying the other words that's in the Bible. Oh, well then I got a lot of words I can use to describe somebody. (laughs) People in a stupor or slumber are usually responsive to loud noises 
or extreme actions only. So if somebody passed out drunk, they just are down there. But if you run up there and just kick them in the head, and they, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> something had to happen that was aggressive. Or you get one of those air horns <laughs> Tom and Jerry used to use, you know. <laughs> and you just aim it at them. That'll <laughs> wake them up. Or you dash water or something. But if you're just talking, oh, Billy, just get up, man. Get up. He don't hear that. He ain't responding to nothing subtle. They are not sensitive to slight, slow, or non-aggressive movements or conditions. In other words, they have to be shaken or aggressively handled to get their attention. If you're in a stupor. Right? This is a dangerous state to be in as a Christian. Because what gets you out of the stupor is usually the condition that your stupor has caused. You wouldn't stop until you got sick from doing it. You wouldn't stop until you caught something you can't get rid of. Now you're before the Lord. All day. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. I, I'm, can I preach to some real human beings in here? Well, you better hear it. You, yeah, you wouldn't stop until something aggressive happened to get your attention. Sickness, injury, failure. You have to lose everything. Get embarrassed, shamed, everything to make you stop because you were in a stupor and when you're in a stupor only an aggressive shaking something big has to happen to wake you up can I keep preaching in here I'm just giving it to you the way the Lord gave it to me for you Romans 6 and 23 for the wages of sin is death that's what sin costs. So if you stay in sin, death is coming. Yes, sir. Amen. That's right. Yeah, and most of the time it's death to your dream and your vision and what you, who you thought you were. Those are wages, and then ultimately it's death, death, dead death, and then eternal death. Amen. Amen. I thought this was a holiness church. Is it still a holiness church? The Bible said holiness without no man shall see. Him. So this is going to always be a holiness church. Somebody asks you, what, what kind of church is that? You say a holiness church. We believe in holiness. Amen. And we don't have to have dollies on our head to be holy. Yeah. But we believe in holiness. That's what's being preached here. Amen. Amen. When we are in a stupor or slumber, we run the risk of missing Jesus' return and perishing with the rest of the world because the world is going to perish. Amen. God is not going to sit back much longer and watch these people desecrate the crucifixion and what Jesus did. That was his son. Amen. And God was bothered by false God worshiping the Old Testament to the point where he was burning stuff up, burning people up. Just, But none of that was about his son. Just imagine the wrath you're going to face by not taking the death of his son seriously. Somebody sent me a post. The other day, and I think it went something like this. It said, the sun is, what, 50 million miles away. And if you stare at it, it'll burn your eyes out. But you're going to just willy-nilly walk in front of the creator of that sun. <laughs> Revelation 2 and 29. He that hath an ear, do what? 
Let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. Oh, did I finish? If we do, oh, let me finish. If we do not hear or see what God is trying to warn us about, we can end up missing his return altogether. Amen. Amen. And I don't love this world enough to miss, to want to stay here. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I'm trying to get the rapture sprint, speed it up, Lord. Somebody, oh, the rapture. Okay, so, so you believe in the rapture? Yeah. It's in the Bible. What about the word rapture is not in the Bible. Well, the word marijuana is not in the Bible. But being sober is. So the word caught up is in the Bible, which is what rapture means. We're going to be caught up. We're going to be raptured. Well, people just do some dumb stuff. Amen. You can sit here and argue about what it is while I'm gone. I'm going to be caught up however you call it. I'm going to be a part of it. The catching away, the called up, the amen. I am ascending. I'm going to be one of them. Look at somebody say, I'm going to be one of them. One of them looked like me, I think. Let me see. Shoot, I'm, I'm in that picture. Revelation 2 and 29, he that hath an ear, let him hear. Look at somebody say, you better hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. It is insensible to reject what we need for the sake of what we want. That's a stupor. That's, ins that's insensible. Insensibility. You're in a stupor. God has given you all kinds. Look at this. God has given you all kinds of people around you that can help you. People around you that can help you. And you won't take advantage. You won't talk to nobody. You're just going to be insensible and reject what you need for what you want. That is illogical. That is the illogical plight of the devil and his plan for you. He wants you to do what he did. How illogical was it for a created being to try to overthrow a creator? So he wants you to be illogical like him. He wants you to do what he did. He wants you to, to reject the truth that could save you in order to get what you want, which destroys you. You even feel bad after you sin and still keep doing it. Yeah, he wants you to keep doing that. This is why sin makes us so stupid. Like Dr. Carter says, sin makes us stupid. We are doing what we want instead of doing what truly benefits us. It ain't like salvation cost. It was already paid for you. All you have to do is accept it. And I know folks say, but it's hard because I be wanting a little taste. That's because you have an appetite for taste. You got to change the appetite. If you get filled with the right stuff and do what the Bible says, think on these things, things that apply, then, then those are the things that you will want. You're thinking on the little taste. First John 3 and 6, no one who abides in him keeps on sinning. No one who keeps on sinning has either seen him or known him. Yeah, I'm just really learning that some people are just not saved. They like church. They like the church look. They like dressing up for church. They like spraying the cologne on, the perfume, all of that. But they don't like Jesus. You know, you can be conditioned by grandmama and great grandmama or big mama. She took you to church all the time, so there is a partial conviction there that you can't really let go of, but you do everything around that conviction. I played for church. I was around church. My mama was a church going woman. But you just like the trappings of Christianity. Yeah. 
Sometimes you can just want to be a part of it so you'll belong to something. You went to seminary school and you ain't saved. The seminary you went to, the Rockefellers created. <laughs> yeah. A lot of the seminaries were created. The big ones, Rockefellers. Satanists made them. Satanists. And that's why you know the Bible very well. So did the Pharisees. And God said, and, and the, uh, the Bible said that their father is the devil. They were the religious leaders. They looked the part better than anyone. So you better check that out. Do you just like being around church? Is Christianity a front? Amen. Ain't nobody going to heaven because of Big Mama. That's why they're trying to get Big Mama in the office of president. So all these folk can have a mama leader. Yes, don't no strong man want a female. Good. No nah, man, I need a I need a man. I need a male leading. I guess what I need, cause I'm a man. I don't I don't need. I I got a mama. Thank God for her. But it was my daddy that set the example for me. Oh yeah, you can look at single parent homes. You can look at them. And a lot of times, and they don't have to be single parent. They could just be a home where the man is weak and the woman is overpowering. The girls are going to be successful. The boy going to be trash. Every time. You don't have to clip. See, we're doing something different here because I'm trying to help y'all with that. But I'm talking about the average home now. The girls got all the degrees, all the diplomas, everything. And the boy is jive. Because it takes a different kind of raising for a man. It takes a man to raise a man. And it takes a man to lead a man. I don't care. You know they're going to take, I, I'm about to take this out the message. You, you know, YouTube ain't trying to hear this. Somebody told me the other day, they deleting comments and deleting, no, they were deleting all the shares. So everybody that shared my mom, Mama, they lied. Mother, they lied to you message. They're deleting your shares. Facebook. Pulling your shares. If you shared it, they're deleting it. Now that was Mother's Day. Back in May. Why y'all, why did you, that started this week. Why are you doing that now? Kamala. I mean, people start sending me the screenshot. Maybe did, did that happen to anybody in here? It happened to you? It happened to you? Yeah, yeah. They deleted your share. You tried to share, mother. They lied to you with somebody, and they deleted it. Cause whoever you shared it, they don't want them to know that they lying to her. Let's just get her in office. Well, can we talk about the policies? Can we talk about something other than her might being black? <laughs> no, ain't no might. She's not black. But I'm saying, like, why is that the only thing y'all talking about? I promise to do a great job with this economy. You're over the economy now. You're there now. You there, you're in there. Right now. <laughs> Man, y'all, oh, oh, they think we, oh, they think we are insane. We're going to get this economy together. You're, it was together before you got it. And now it's. We 
but you're not supposed to be preaching a political. I'm not. I'm preaching a stupid, stupor message. Stupidus in stupidum. No, I can't stay there because then I ain't going to handle the post. I'll take all this out. Okay, let's see. This. this is why sin makes us so stupid. We are doing what we want instead of doing what truly benefits us. First John 3 and 6. That's voting. Folks are voting for what they want instead of what's going to benefit them. Give me the black girl. Really? How did Barack work out for you? Ain't he semi-black? He's semi-black. She's no black. Blacks. I, I just don't understand, but it's what we feel. She's, you're doing what you want instead of doing what truly benefits us. You know what will really benefit us? For us to stop believing what social media is telling us and get in our word and start trusting God. Stop getting emotionally manipulated by the news. No matter how much we want to do it or have it or feel we can't go without it, we still must deny it if it is sin. I'm going to slow that down for the people over there. No matter how much we may want to do it, or have it, or feel we can't go without it, we still must deny it if it is sin. In a stuporous state, you reject the truth about what you need to deny because you have already decided that it's something that you cannot live without. Mark 8 and 34, and when he had called the people unto him, with his disciples also, he said unto them, whosoever will come after me, let them do what? You got to deny it. Then you got to take up the cross, the sin, the cross, the hurt. The, the, well, how, what you got to give up to do this? You got to take up the cross. Amen. 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 You know, this ain't a popular message. I wish I could get up here. And, no, I don't. I wouldn't like me. I'm going to tell you the truth. This is the truth. Amen. How many of you believe it's the truth? Amen. Rejecting the truth about it doesn't change the outcome. So you can reject me, what I'm saying. You can get mad at me. You can talk about me. You can talk about my freckles, my height, all that. You can just talk about me. But you can't change the outcome. You can't stop the wages of sin being death. All of us in here probably at some point wanted something that they couldn't have. And you had to deny yourself that for the sake of your conviction in what you believe. We can't have everything we want. That's why the world is messed up now. But rejecting the truth about it doesn't change the outcome. The wages of sin is death. If you look around you, you will see how it has affected you, your life, your health, your future, etc. God is trying to get you out of the stupor so you can be in a better place and go back with him when Jesus returns. That's it. Look at your life. Aren't you tired of... Like my daddy used to say, aren't you tired of slipping and sliding, ducking and dodging, peeping and hiding? Look at your life. It's time to wake up. Look at somebody and say, wake up. It's time to wake up from the slumber and stupor and receive the message that can change your life. Romans 1 and 18, for the wrath of God is revealed from the heavens against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who by their unrighteousness do what? See, that's what happens. Once you become this person, you'll begin to suppress truth. Yeah. Right. Now you're the preacher that's mad at me because I dare to tell the truth while you suppress it. Right. 
it make you look a certain way because you up lying. Amen. I'm going to tell the truth. Summary. This person been out the whole message. Ain't heard nothing. The message ain't helped them at all. <laughs> to break out of a stupor, you must stop doing what is causing the condition in the first place. Amen. You will never be free from being in a, a drunken stupor if you keep getting drunk. You got to stop drinking. Amen. And you know, in order to really stop drinking, you just really got to get sick of being boneheaded and making stupid decisions that's causing you to get drunk. So you got to fix that part. Amen. And it's not just alcohol, it's everything. Marijuana, weed, all the stuff you're doing. Amen. Amen. Got to get stuff fixed. The sin that so easily besets you must be avoided and you must break free from its bondage. Idolatry was the sin that caused the spiritual stupor for the Israelites and it's the same sin for us today. It's still idolatry. Putting our goals, our desires, our wants, our accolades, our approval over the sensibility of the gospel is idolatry. Amen. Amen. It's idolatry. And they're going to mix it in there too, man. You, boy, y'all liberals. If you a liberal at the liberal convention, they had abortion trucks parked out there doing abortions on demand. Now, a truck? They letting you know what God they serve. That's Molech. That's the false god. And that God punishes you for the abortion. You don't just jump up having an abortion and forget it. You get punished. But the true and living God don't do that to you. Amen. They got trucks out there for all you that's lining up with them. That's what you're lining up with. Well, see. No, ain't no C. You can't make me C. So you gonna just go vote for the, I ain't said I'm voting for anybody. I'm not voting. Now that's me. I'm not. I don't like nobody. But I ain't finna get out there with them trucks while they doing abortion. I'm not finna line up with witches and Satanists. Amen. I'm not, Amen. I could just not play in the game, but I'm sure not putting the card on that deck. Look at folks, boy. Oh, your ancestors. What? What did they do? Fight for the right for me to be able to make this decision without your interference? And I can decide how to live my life? Ain't that what they did? Ain't that what they did? Didn't they give me the right to make my own choice? You ain't gonna make me pick out of the two that you pick. I don't have to. I don't have to. Kunta Kinte, they be proud of me. Make the decision I would want to make. You a leader, that's irresponsible. To who? You ain't gave me nobody I want to pick. I'm not picking. Amen. Amen. You give me a pizza with no cheese and then a pizza with anchovies, I don't want you either one of them pizzas. I can't pick out of that. Come on, man, you gotta have. What do you mean you ain't gonna pick one of these pizzas? No, they both nasty. I don't want those. Better put some pepperoni on one of them. <laughs> I mean, isn't it? <laughs> oh, did I? Oh, the, the, 
I'm going to act like I didn't say that. Let's move on. The sin that so easily besets you must be, he said it sounded great. <laughs> y'all, y'all can't be like that. You know, when you come off the fast, it's supposed to be like gradually. You can't already have the delivery scheduled online. You already ordered it. It's already ready. It's already. The bakery is the bakery is in search of your ingredients right now. <laughs> that box of eclairs that you are waiting on. That's no way to end the fast. And watch, watch, you're gonna get. You know, if when you go this long without sugar, you will get high. Like you will get high like you just smoked a If you go and try to eat a large amount of sugar, you go be let me find let me find. This this go be you. You going to be in the stupor. The sugar stupor. can't do that man you gotta back into the, you gotta ease into there don't do that amen some of y'all don't need to go man your skin done cleared up you look better you wearing clothes you ain't wore in years you feel better yeah you can tuck your shirt in now you ain't been able to tuck your shirt in. You was online at tuckless.com before this fast. And now you can actually <laughs> tuck that shirt. And you're going to mess all that up. Look at somebody. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. Sugar daddies, sugar babies, and sugar children. Just sugar something. Amen. You got energy. Look at you. Y'all, y'all all spry. So, yeah, but I'm gonna have to be slugging. Y'all gonna be at the outdoor concert. Yeah, yeah. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> the sin that so easily besets you must be avoided and you must break free from his bondage. Idolatry was the sin that caused the spiritual stupor for the Israelites. So put in our goals, desires, and wants, all of that's idolatry now. Doing this over a period of time will make us sleep on truth and be in a daze where we cannot hear or see what is real. Just look at our nation now. So many Christians are on the same political side with witches, Satanists, LGBTQPT plus backslash dollar sign. <laughs> and liberals on the side but believe they are in Christ? Can you be saved and be on the side with them? Do, would they let you be on the side with them? That's the other side. This is a stupor. That's what it is. It's a stupor. But this comes, it didn't just happen overnight. This comes from years of accepting sin without remorse. Role reversals in the home and emotional religion instead of strong biblical foundation. Yeah, years of, years of accepted sin without remorse yeah these preachers are for the LGBTQ side because their organist and choir director is one but this comes from years of accepting sin without remorse preachers ain't saying nothing now the devil offered them some money to make everybody get a shot they, they took it because you ain't said nothing in years against anything so the devil called your bluff Oh, God's a healer? Watch this. 
scared them all out of church. Yeah. Years. Years of accepting sin without remorse. Role reversal in the home. Yeah. Yeah, if the boss chick is running the home, you don't have no problem with a boss chick running the country. You're used to that. An emotional religion instead of strong biblical foundation. Oh boy, don't know no Bible, but if the music get going. <laughs> Somebody sent me this one preacher. I said, I know more of his dance moves than I know scripture that he said. Every time I see him, he just. <laughs> I said, why they don't upload your sermons? Don't nobody upload your sermons. Because you dance better than you preach. Wake up, people. Look at somebody and say, wake up. The return of Christ is closer than ever before. And this is not the time to sleep or slumber. The truth is being told right now and many cannot hear because they're in a stupor. My voice can't wake you up. The truth can't wake you up. Only an extremely loud noise is going to get them up. But unfortunately, that sound will be the trumpet of God and it will be too late. First Thessalonians 4 and 16. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we what? Ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Therefore, let us not sleep as others do, but let us watch and be sober. So he's not talking about the sleep you need to recharge your body. No, don't be in a stupor, but be sober and watch. For they that sleep, sleep in the night, and they that be drunk are drunk in the night. But let us who are of the day be what? Sober. Sober. Awake. Put it on the breastplate of faith and love and for a helmet the hope of salvation. For God hath not appointed us to wrath. Y'all, this is one of the most powerful verses in the Bible. This means everything. For God hath not appointed us to wrath. You know what that means? We're suffering now because of the devil. But when God comes back, it's going to be his wrath. That's how I know he's coming to get me. Because I get to escape his wrath. Because he has not appointed us to wrath. I'm not being punished with the world. Because I'm not of the world. I may be in the world. But I'm not of the world. So I don't have to be punished with the world. God has not appointed me. To wrath. Just like when God went to battle the Egyptian gods and went to fight them and made all the plagues hit them and the little Israel ended up just in the corner. Nothing affected them at all. Now how is the world under total darkness but God's people still had light? Because God was mad at the Egyptians. And he was fighting the Egyptians. So God have not appointed us to wrath. But to obtain what? Salvation. By our Lord Jesus Christ. Everyone stand to your feet. Well praise the Lord. Amen. If you don't want to be left down here and you know you need to get something right, just come on up. And we're just going, I'm not going to be left here. 
Lord, I'm letting this go. This ain't keeping me here. I'm not missing God over this. Nope. 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 You know, that's what a message is for. I mean, I'm, I'm preaching this message so we can just make it right. Amen? Amen. Whatever it is, whatever it is, I don't want hatred, jealousy, envy, fighting and shooting, whatever you're doing. I don't want none of that keeping me here, man. I'm getting rid of that. I'm giving that to God. I'm giving it up. Amen. Amen. So, Lord, wake us up out of our stupor. Wake us up. Wake us up. I don't want Gabriel's horn to wake me up. Mm -mm, that's time to go when I hear that. That can't be my wake up call because it's too late. Anyone else? Praise the Lord. Everyone just bow your heads. Father God, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, God, for your truth, for this message. God, for this end time message. Many of us, many of us are experiencing all kinds of things during these end times. Fights, battles, struggles, trying to break free from things, fighting things, just whatever it is. But Father God, we all come before you with an open heart, just allowing you to perform a surgical procedure on us to make us free. Free us, Father God. Wake us up now. Let this message be what wakes us up. Father God, let this message be what makes us consider our ways, our doing, whatever we're doing, Father God, that may be against you, whatever it is, the sin that so easily gets us each time. Father God, we want freedom right now. We want to see you when you return, and we want to adhere to the words that were spoken today. This message, Father God, was for us. It's for me. It's for us. So, Father God, we pray right now that you forgive us for whatever it is. Forgive us of our sin. You said that if any man sin, you are faithful and just to forgive us our sin. Cleanse us from all un righteousness so whatever it is that is unrighteous God make us righteous in the name of Jesus whatever struggle whatever it is no matter how long it's been whatever God you have the power you have the power and you died Jesus died so that we could be free so we could be saved so we could go back with him so father God Wake us up. Wake us up. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. 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 Come on, hug somebody and say, God woke me up. He woke me up. He woke me up, man. Sobering message wakes us up. It's time to wake 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 up.